Uh, what were the negative experiences you had while visiting Bangladesh? I couldn't believe those places existed in Bangladesh. So I do think that the Bangladeshi government needs to do a better job. What has been your most scariest experience while traveling? Harassed me, took, ripped my camera out of my hand. A great tragedy happened that changed um, my life. I would say that I was living the American dream. It's been the hardest job I've ever had. That was one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. I was so close to losing my cool with one man. I've gone through some dark periods in these past couple years. I'll tell you my least favorite thing about Bangladesh. And now the Bangladeshi people may not like to hear this, but I will tell you the worst food I've ever had. We get to talk about a Bangladeshi scam now. The guy is an absolute scumbag. How many times did you get traveler's diarrhea? I spent 69 days in Bangladesh. That's a crazy amount of time to spend anywhere. But during those 69 days, I fell in love with the Bangladeshi culture. I fell in love with the Bangladeshi food. But most importantly, I fell in love with the Bangladeshi people. I cannot thank you. You have changed my life. My trip, my time in Bangladesh has seriously changed my life. And I am forever indebted to the amazing people of Bangladesh for everything that they've done for me. But as you can tell, we're not in Bangladesh right now. No, no, no. We're in Tokyo, Japan. I left Bangladesh probably three months ago, and shortly after the trip, I asked you guys to send me your questions about my experience in Bangladesh, my experience in life in general, my journey as a travel vlogger. And today I'm here to answer all those questions. You guys sent me over 500 questions and comments. But I left Bangladesh almost three months ago now, and I wanted to take time to make this video because I wanted to step back and you know really think and absorb everything that took place in those 69 days, because those 69 days were capital C crazy. So I'm gonna go through all your questions right now. We're gonna put them right up here. One important note is that I really haven't looked at the majority of these questions. Uh, none of my responses are gonna be pre-planned. I'm going to read them. I'm going to give you my open, honest, transparent answer. Um, but that's it. Um, it is it is my job as, as a travel content creator uh, to be honest and not to sugarcoat anything. And while I love so many things about Bangladesh, there were just a few things that I didn't like. So we'll get into those later in the video when the questions come up. Please don't get upset with me if I say anything that you might not agree with. Please engage in the comments for any constructive dialogue as well. Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. Before we begin, the number one question that I got, which is also the most common question that I get when I visit other countries, is when am I coming back uh, to Bangladesh? And the answer is, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna come back in 20, 24. There's so much left of the country that I didn't get to explore. I didn't get to explore um, Sajak. I didn't get to explore, oh my gosh, what's the name? Um, uh, you, you take you take the launch there. There was, a, there was a place where you're supposed to take a boat. Sorry, it's been a couple months since I left Bangladesh. The names um, are kind of fuzzy. But I promise you, I am coming back to Bangladesh. I just don't know when because I don't really plan anything. I came to Japan with like two days notice. I let y'all vote on where I should go. Y'all voted Japan. Poop. I booked the ticket and I'm here. And while I really, really wanna come back to Bangladesh soon, there's also so many other countries that I want and have to visit before uh, I'm gonna to return to Bangladesh. So fingers crossed, I'll be back in 2024, uh, inshallah. Let's make it happen. Get down in the comments, reach out to me via DM. Let's make like the craziest Bangladeshi video series that's ever, ever been created, y'all. And I'm somehow taken the wrong way. But last thought on that, Thank you so much for, for wanting me to come back to your country. That, that really means a lot. Um, I've seen some bloggers have gone to a lot of countries. They don't post a lot of positive things. And people are in the comments like, don't come back, don't come back. Um, but the fact that so many of y'all want me to come back and ask me to come back uh, means you really like uh, my videos. And so that just, it means the world to me. I can't even describe um, how happy that makes me feel. So thank you guys. Question number one, Rafsan wants to know, my name is Rafsan. My question is, before visiting Bangladesh, what was your expectation of Bangladesh to be? And now that you visited it, how? Well, the question cut off there, but I think they're gonna ask me how I feel after being there for 69 days compared to what I thought Bangladesh was gonna be like at first. Well, I had actually had some friends visit Bangladesh, some other vlogging friends, like 11 years ago before any other vloggers came to Bangladesh. So from their videos, I kinda had an idea of what to expect. I knew that the people were probably gonna be very, very friendly. Uh, I knew that the food was gonna be amazing. At least these were things that I suspected. Um, but there was also just this kind of feeling in the way they portrayed their videos that Bangladesh would be this run down, dirty, poor, falling apart place just, just filled with poverty. 
And while I certainly, you know, found a lot of unfortunate poverty and a lot of people struggling in Bangladesh, I was so surprised by the beauty uh, of the country, places like Silad and Sri Mangal. I couldn't believe those places existed in Bangladesh because if you type in Bangladesh into Google, you're gonna get pictures of factories, you're gonna get pictures like the worst parts of Dhaka. No one talks about the beauty that's in Bangladesh and neither did my friends 10 years ago. So I was blown away, I had some expectations, but I was blown away by the beauty of Bangladesh and you know, straight up, nothing could prepare me uh, for just like this, the amazing hospitality. Uh, of everybody there, so yeah. All expectations completely obliterated. Adeb Khan wants to know, hey Brent, what are the biggest differences you've seen between Pakistani and Bangladesh people in terms of culture or personality? Okay, I cannot make a single video about India or Pakistan or Bangladesh without a lot of people getting very angry and upset in the comments. Oh, Pakistan is better than this. No, Bangladeshi food is better than Indian is better than this. And it's just these fights and these squabbles. And believe you me, I understand the historical context behind these disagreements, the, the wars, everything that's happened between Bangladesh, Pakistan, and India. So I know there's a lot of anger and a lot of hatred amongst the countries, but y'all, you, you, we're all the same as people, but everyone in Pakistan, it was, it was the exact same experience in Bangladesh. 99.99% .99 of people treated me with an insane amount of kindness. Everybody was so generous. Literally, if you dropped me in, Bangladesh, I would think it was Pakistan. And if you drop me in Bangladesh, I would think it was Pakistan. Or maybe I said that in, in reverse. But you get what I'm saying. Very similar people, very similar cultures, kind of torn apart from these disagreements that were essentially, you know, started by rich leaders. And now the, the anger and the vitriol just spews out and into a lot of the youth. But please guys, like you have so much more in common with each other um, than the differences. No one wins in this world if we spend all our time hating an entire race of people. So Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, one of one, virtually the same. Nazia asks, hola Brent. Oh, she from Latin America? A little Espanol speaker, eh? Uh, I'm Natasha, I hope you're doing well. My questions are, what are some of the best things about traveling in Bangladesh? Will you, re will you revisit Bangladesh? Well, that's tough because there's things I love about Bangladesh, but when it comes to actually traveling Bangladesh, I feel a little bit differently. For example, one major reason I came to Bangladesh was to get more people to visit Bangladesh, to learn about Bangladesh, and to see that it's a cool country. It's worth visiting. There's amazing people there. You shouldn't just discredit. Bangladesh. My biggest gripe with kind of the lack of a, of a tourism department or tourism ministry in Bangladesh was I just had no idea where to go. You know, there's only so much information available online about the places you want to explore in Bangladesh. So I had the major ones picked out. Then I got to Bangladesh, people were like, oh, you got to go to the Sajak Valley. You have to go here, you have to go here. And I'm like, I had no idea these places existed. So I do think that the Bangladeshi government needs to do a better job of showing the world What's in Bangladesh? Show them the beauty, show them Sajak Valley, show them Silet, and just have better infrastructure in place, you know, bus routes, uh, tour guides, easily accessible, things like that. I, um, I would do the trip a lot differently when I come back. Ooh, here's a really good one. Always Relatable wants to know, what has been your most scariest experience while traveling? I'll give you my top three. Scariest, number one, forever and ever, I hope so at least, uh, was getting sick and almost dying of typhoid uh, in Dubai. I actually got typhoid in Pakistan, went to Dubai to seek medical care and spent eight days in the hospital. Truly didn't know if, if I was gonna make it and I don't say it in the sense of like, oh, I thought I was gonna die. Like I was, I was so scared y'all, so scared and alone and that was the worst time period of my life ever. Never wanna relive it. I don't even think about it. I like, unless someone asked me the question about worst times in my life, I never think about it. I just like blocked it out. PTSD, you dig? Um, then the second scariest uh, thing never happened to me while traveling was I was in Vietnam and I was hiking in these crazy, crazy mountains in the hills, lush, beautiful rice fields. And I went out with this girl and we were hiking all day and we thought, you know, we did one hike. Let's take one more hike and get back before dark. Well, we got lost, completely lost. We found what we thought was a house. It was kind of like a farm. As I approached them to ask for help, I saw these two dogs in the farm stand up and immediately just bark and bolt after me. I turned around, ran as fast as I have in my life, straight downhill. Not sure how I didn't fall, not sure how I didn't break a leg, 
um, as these wild dogs. Well, maybe not wild, maybe they're like pets. But either way, they were like big, vicious dogs. And I ran like hell. And I escaped the dogs. Somehow, met up with the girl, but we were still lost. As the sun started to set, by the grace of God, Allah, whatever higher power you want to believe in, um, someone actually uh, found us. Like another tour group was like, oh, what are you guys doing here? I was like, please get us back uh, to the hostel. They led us there. That was a spooky one. I was, I was so relieved to get back to the hostel after that. Y'all thought like, what's gonna happen to me? Eaten by dogs? Lost in the mountains? Eaten by something else? And then there's just some minor ones. Like when I was in Pakistan, the security guard came up to me, harassed me, took, ripped my camera out of my hand. I thought he was gonna confiscate it. That was scary in the sense of like, I don't wanna lose my camera because I've got like so much footage um, on here. Um, but yeah, other than that, very fortunate that I've been all over the world and only have had a few, you know, dangerous or scary experiences. The world's, world's a safe place, guys. Don't be scared of the world, all right? A Pyro Sleeping wants to know, hi Brent, I've been watching your videos since the last two months. I find them very informative and the presentation is made in a fun way. Let us know what Bangladesh can do to make life easier and attractive for foreign tourists. Well, the answer is clear. We need more kittens uh, in Bangladesh, more statues of kittens. Uh, in Bangladesh. Um, but kind of like I talked to before, the tourism industry, the tourism department, ministry, whatever, they really need to step their game up. They need to reach out uh, to some influencers. They need to create promotional content. They need to show the beauty of Bangladesh. They need to show that it's not just factories and, and, and garment workers. They need to show that Bangladesh is, is a cultural and gastronomic uh, capital of, of that part of the world. Like there are so many reasons to come to Bangladesh but you never know, because at least for me, as a white guy, yeah, I'm white. Growing up in America, we never learned anything about Bangladesh. I didn't learn about Bangladesh until I was like in my 20s, and I met a guy from Bangladesh. So, you gotta put Bangladesh out there, uh, Bangladeshi Tourism Department, show, show the world what's hiding in your country, okay? And now for a question I always get asked, it's all about the money, honey, you dig? Uh, hey Brent, well this is uh, Pan Chan An Chowdhury Pavel 2964. That's a long username. Uh, hey Brent, my question is how do you manage your travel expenses? Poorly, very, very, very poor. Uh, you know, uh, I try to operate on a budget. I try not to stay anywhere that's gonna cost me more than like $35 a day for me. 7 to 25 is like the sweet spot uh, for on money I want to spend when it comes to accommodations. And I usually try not to spend more than like 20 to $30 a day on food. But again, it depends on the country I'm in. Obviously, I'm in Japan right now, so it's going to be a lot more expensive uh, than a country like Bangladesh. Japan's also going to be a lot cheaper than a country like the United States, you dig? My income is primarily derived uh, from YouTube, um, Facebook, um, donations um, from guys like you. Oh yeah, great time to hit that subscribe and like button. Um, would really, really appreciate your support on that. Uh, and then of course, a brand deal. So companies will reach out to me, they will pay me to um, highlight their restaurant or highlight their product or something like that. And of course, because you know I built a lot of trust amongst you guys, my audience, um, I would never recommend a brand or, or anything Thing that I wouldn't use myself or that I didn't like. So if a restaurant wants to pay me to come in to try their food, it's not good. The video's not getting posted and I'm giving the money back. I would never steer you guys uh, in the wrong direction. So that's just one way I manage my travel expenses. Most important thing to know here is I am not rich. Like, I'm, I don't even know if you can say I'm living like paycheck to paycheck, um, but I am not one of those, I make six figures a year, travel vlogging, join my course and let me show you how. That said, I'm always happy to show people um, how to live the kind of life um, that I live. Um, but I'm not there yet. You know, by the time this video gets posted, we'll be right around 98,000 subscribers. And YouTube doesn't pay you for subscribers. They pay you for views. But of course, the brands are more likely to pay you if you have more subscribers. So, inshallah, 200,000, 500,000, the subscriber count will go up and up. And hopefully um, that'll result in a little more money in my pocket so I can, you know, visit more expensive, crazier countries and do a lot cooler things and do more giveaways and givebacks um, for all of you guys. Bayezid Hossein wants to know, hey Brent, which place in Bangladesh do you like the most so far? And I like it best when you go eat something and you say, pow. A lot of people always ask where the pow came from. I've been saying pow every time I take a bite of something. Gosh, for like eight years now. It's been a, it's been a long time since I first started making videos. Uh, I've been saying pow 
while I throw it in my mouth. I actually heard a radio DJ say that once when he would like play like a killer trick, he'd be like a track, he'd be like pow, and I'm like, boy, I like that. Um, so I have creatively borrowed pow uh, from that DJ. And when it comes to my favorite place in Bangladesh, that's really hard because there were so many places that I didn't get a chance um, to explore. For me, Sri Lanka was, was perfect. It was beautiful, the air was amazing, the weather was great, it was so green, it was so lush. Um, amazing food, you got the village life, you got the rural life, you got the indigenous, like Bangladeshi people, like living deep, deep throughout the country. Sri Lanka was my favorite. I only got to spend two days there, I would definitely spend more time there again. This question is a great one. It's one everybody wants to know, and I think this is the one I'm, I'm most happy to share, but also could be like the longest answer. Uh, Riyad Alam6596 says, Bro, tell us about your YouTube journey, and what is your aim in life, and how long will you stay uh, in Bangladesh? I'm realizing that I posted this question while I was still in Bangladesh. I left uh, Bangladesh now. My YouTube journey, my, my vlogging journey, um, it, it's kind of long and complicated. I guess we could start back, way back, like my first international trip uh, in like Europe, and I was like, oh man, this solo traveling thing, kind of being alone, this is cool. After that, I went to Costa Rica, I was like, solo, solo travel thing, I really, really like this. But it wasn't until 2016 when I went to Thailand that my life, my dreams, my goals, Everything changed. I went to Thailand and I just started like making little like short videos on Snapchat. I had maybe like five followers on Snapchat back then, uh, but my friends really liked the videos. They thought they were funny. Whenever I would go around Thailand and meet people, I'd have them join in the videos. And overall, just people really, really liked it. So I was like, hmm, hmm. But about six months before that Thailand trip took place, um, a great tragedy happened that changed uh, my life um, forever. And that was my mom died of cancer uh, in October of 2015. I was actually supposed to fly to Thailand a week before she passed away. And by some like, I don't know if you want to call it a miracle, I don't know, chance, fate, God allow, whatever, um, I didn't make the flight. And so I was very angry. Um, I knew my mom was like struggling with cancer, kind of understood that she, it's a long complicated story guys. I don't know if I want to get into all this um, right now. Um, I knew that my mother's cancer was terminal, um, but I did not know that she had so little life um, left, to, left to live. She died at 59 years old, essentially. Um, but I, I came back from the airport, I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna stay here until I can figure out the next flight. And then things took a turn, and uh, a week later, she was dead. And so I think about what would have happened had I been in Thailand um, when my mom died, when I wouldn't have had any chance to see her or talk to her or say goodbye. So I'm extremely grateful um, that I had the chance to hold her hand, talk to her and be with my family um, during, during, during that awful time. But it was, uh, it was her passing that changed my life. My mom was everything. Obviously I love my dad very much, but you know, a mom's uh, a mom. And uh, when she died, it really put everything into, into perspective for me. I mean, it's so cliche to say it, but you know, life is short. And seeing how quickly she lost her life, um, it just, it, it, it lit something in me. Something that said, there's so much life to live. There's so much you can do in this world. You don't want to have any regrets. Again, it's all cliche. You don't have any regrets when you're on your deathbed. But that's how I felt. And then shortly after she died, Another one of my friends, he wasn't even 30 years old, he died of cancer. And so I, all these people were dying around me and all these people were getting sick. And I was just like, I gotta act. And if I don't act now, I'm never gonna act. I have to start this journey right now. That was like the longest street life uh, ever. Are you kidding me? Um, so to sum it up, it was a combination of things that led to me quitting my job, dedicating my entire life to travel, YouTube, social media, um, and, and getting right here, but it took a lot of luck, a lot of opportunity, a lot of hard work, um, and unfortunately tragedy. If my mom was still alive today, would I be doing this? Who knows? I, I really don't know, but hopefully uh, I'm making her proud. But, 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 before all that happened, I went to university, I had a great job, a really, really good job. I would say that I was living the American dream. I had a great house, I had a dog, I had a lot of good friends, I was living in an area that I loved, and I had my dream job. I worked in scientific sales, I loved my coworkers, I loved my customers, I was good 
at my job. And of course, since we're in America, the most important thing is that you make a lot of money. And I was very happy with the money I was making. I could have easily stayed with that job 30, 40, 50 more years, retired without a single worry um, in the world. That doesn't sound fun, does it? That doesn't sound, it sounds too comfortable. And I've really never been one uh, for comfort. So made the decision to quit my job. It was a oh, excruciating decision. There was so much fear, um, but I did it. And I think there's a few more components of the story that might be asked in later questions. So we'll finish up on this question a little bit later. But as for my YouTube journey, uh, while I'm very thankful to be closing in on 100,000 subscribers, uh, it's been hard. It's been tough. It's been the hardest job I've ever had uh, in my life. There, there were some months where, where I really didn't make any money at all, especially starting out. So there was that risk of like, hey, I'm quitting this great job. I might not make any money from this. I might fail. I might fail at my dream. And so the dream never stops. The dream never continues. $100,000 is in the end goal. 500,000 subscribers is in the end goal. 100, you know, million subscribers isn't the end goal. The end goals are that I entertain people, that people derive some value from the work I do, that I, in some small, not cliche way, make the world um, a better place. But at the very minimum level, I just want to make people smile and laugh and enjoy their lives because y'all scroll all day and there's so much bad news, there's so much sad news, and there's a lot of negativity. So hopefully when you come to my page or channel, you put all that to the side and you laugh a little bit, you get hungry, you learn something, and we have a good time together. Okay, it's Sajid8188. I noticed that almost everyone commenting has like four digits after their name. Is that just how like YouTube does it? Hi Brand, or hi Brand. Uh, my name is Sajid. My question is, how was your Silet trip? As a Siletti, we love Silet so much. You know, I really love Silet. I loved it so much, I went back there twice. Uh, amazing cricket stadium. If you've seen my uh, Bangladesh versus Afghanistan cricket video that took place in Silet, mind blower, one of the most incredible sporting events uh, of my life. Uh, Silet, very green, very lush. Uh, the people were nice. People in, I mean, people in, in Bangladesh, they were all the same. Everyone was nice no matter what like different city I went to. When I come back to Bangladesh, I'm definitely gonna go to Sled again because there were a lot of things I didn't get to see. There was like a big mosque in town I didn't get to go to. And then there was some place called like the Ragagaga swamps or something. There's some crazy swamp lands in Sled I gotta check out. Love Sled, we'll come back to Sled again. Ooh, man, it's cold in Japan. I miss that Bangladesh heat, you dig? Even though I did just sweat all, all day, just soaked, never been hotter in my life. Uh, than Bangladesh. Uh, Sajia friend wants to know, what was the best food you've tried so far in Bangladesh? Also, how can you compare your Dhaka and Chittagong travel exp uh, experiences? Okay, the best thing I ate, without a doubt, the Mezban uh, from Chittagong. That was an all-time meal. That was one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. It was so good. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check that out. Yeah, the Mezban. Nothing, most, 99, 9% of the dishes I had in Bangladesh were delicious. The bortas, the fish, the seafood, everything. Everything in Bangladesh was delicious. I don't even think I had one bad meal. That mezban, man, that just stood out. The flavors, the time it took, the process to make it, the capital L-O-V-E love that they put into that mezban, pure, pure fire oil. That was by far the best thing uh, I ate in Bangladesh. I still dream about it. That's gonna be one of the first things I eat when I go back. Uh, but yeah, comparing the Dhaka to the Chittagong travel experience, it seemed like the people in Chittagong, Chittagong doesn't get many tourists, I'm guessing, because people were so excited to see me, a tourist, a foreigner, for lack of a better word, a white guy, um, around Chittagong, like the response, just like walking through the street, people were way more excited to see me and like interested uh, than the people in Dhaka were. But yeah, I mean, as far as, I don't know, get too hard to compare. The people are nice in both, the food was good in both. Um, but you know, I think Chittagong was a lot more green just because you have access to the water right there, right? Nugent, 2002 wants to know, what are some things you would advise the Bangladesh government or local officials to improve on so foreign nationals can enjoy their visit uh, in Bangladesh? They're, they definitely need to make the e-visa process a lot more smooth. I was very fortunate that I was able to just arrive without a lot of documents and they let me in the country. Um, but for some people, they don't get the same treatment as I do. Um, so it was, it was 
very confusing also what I needed just to get into Bangladesh. So the government needs to revamp uh, the visa on arrival, the e-visa situation. They also really need to take care of the visa extension process. And I know, I know, I know, you guys, the Bangladeshis, you have so much trouble getting documents, passports, um, and just like any important document from what I've been told um, due to like, I don't know, issues with like bureaucracy and, and slowness of the government and some things. And so I, I get that you have a lot more valid complaints than I do, but I tried to renew my visa. It was so difficult. There were, it was no, no clear direction. Um, that was one of the most like tedious, tiresome processes um, in, in Bangladesh was trying to get that visa extension that was so crazy and so expensive. I think they wanted to charge me like, man, three to four to 500 to stay another month. I get it, I get it. More than happy to pay, you know, if, if that's what the country, you know, wants. But I definitely think they need to extend um, the visa duration as well, because 30 days, just not enough for Bangladesh. Mohammed Maidin, 1934. Were you born in 1934, Mohammed? Hey man, my question is simple. Yeah, complicated. I'd like to know whether Bangladesh lived with your expectations, and if so, where would you rank it in your, I gotta make sure I don't get run over. Uh, where would you rank it in your favorite countries list? That is if it did make the cut. Uh, got any plans revisiting your beautiful country? You're leaving soon, keep up the great work, man. Um, first off, of course, thank y'all for the questions um, and, and the really nice compliments. Kind of like I said earlier, Bangladesh blew away and exceeded every expectation um, that I had 100 fold. Nothing could have prepared me for what like the real Bangladesh um, was like. But when it comes to the question of like ranking countries or saying one country is better than another, or it's my favorite, I can't really answer that question because most of my experiences in foreign countries how I view it months, weeks, days later, it's usually dependent on the people and the experiences that I've had. Answering that question always gets people upset. Oh, I thought I thought you loved my country the most, or I thought this country was better. No, how can you love that country? So I'm never gonna rank uh, the countries. Bangladesh is up there and one of my favorite uh, countries to ever visit, especially from like an experience um, standpoint. Rezwan Zachariah, 1754. Were you born in 1754? I hope not. Are you a vampire? Uh, what were the negative experiences you had while visiting Bangladesh? Luckily, the negative experiences were few and far between and almost non-existent. Uh, if you've watched my earlier vlogs, there was one where uh, this very aggressive uh, beggar approached me. He was like grabbing on my arm, squeezing really, really tight. You know, that was, it, wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't like super negative. It wouldn't, you know, didn't slow me down. But that was probably the only like, hmm, not not really a fan of this type of behavior um, experience in, in Bangladesh. Oh, the one thing that I really, really didn't like is the aggressiveness and the persistence of the rickshaw drivers, especially in Cox's Bazaar and Dhaka. But I get it. I know they're hardworking. I know they're out there to make a living. I know they're out there to make a buck. And they see a guy like me and they think, oh, tourist, you know, please, please come and ride with us. But man, some were so aggressive, man. I, I was so close to losing my cool with one man. This guy just kept following me, following me, following me. I'm shaking my head. No, 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 I'm good. I'm doing good. And then he literally drove onto the sidewalk to cut me off. I was, I rarely lose my cool, man. But when you try to do something like that, like, ooh, I was, I had to take a deep breath and take a couple steps back. But yeah, other than those things, minor, minor inconveniences in Bangladesh. There was really nothing um, that I would consider like an overall negative experience. And so our next question comes from Iman Fatima, 8813. Hello Brent, I'm Iman from Pakistan. I'm so inspired by the positive energy you show all the time, but it's difficult to give positive vibes and smiling face all the time. It's commendable. Want to ask, how do you do that? So essentially, um, how do I stay so positive? Uh, how do I stay so happy? Um, at the end of the day, you know, I'm just a real person, a regular guy, just like everybody else with problems, struggles, issues. Um, but I certainly never reflect that on camera because there's already enough negative stuff in the air out there. You don't wanna, who, who's gonna watch me be negative um, or complain? But for me, like, just being able to do this, to be able to talk to y'all right now, to be able to be out here right now, this is one of my favorite things in life. Like, it doesn't get any better than this. The smile, you see, like, it, it's all natural. You can't wipe it off my face. I'm just so, so happy to be able to do this and the fact that so many people like what I'm doing. Now, if I was doing this and I wasn't getting a single viewer, maybe I wouldn't be so happy. But, um, you know, I don't think most of you have ever met me in real life and uh, the person on camera really not different than the person you'll meet in real life and my friends, followers that have met me 
um, can attest to that. But like I said, I got problems. I, I struggle with, um, sometimes I get depressed. Um, sometimes I have crazy anxiety and sometimes I have a lot of self doubt and I do my best to never show that uh, in the videos. But the point of all this, this Q and A session is, is just be honest. So I'm, all, I'm usually always smiling. I'm always very happy, but I've gone through some dark periods in these past couple of years. And there's been a lot of things that just really bummed me out and, and we were not going to get into it because we're only, we're only going up, right? But yeah, every day isn't perfect. Social media is not real life. These next questions kind of tie in together from Turbo Zone and uh, Poppy Arada. Hi Brent, my question is, how would you rate the hospitality of Bangladeshi people? Hello brother, what was the best thing you enjoyed till now in Bangladesh? I mean, the, what is the best thing in Bangladesh in your opinion? It's, it's the people. It's the hospitality. The hospitality was world class. It was insane. Everyone treated me so kindly. Everyone treated me like a brother, like a family member. The Gucci store. We ain't got no money for Gucci. Like I said, maybe a few more subscribes and hit that like button. We can shop at the Gucci store. I still won't shop there even if I if I had money. Brands are stupid. Pakistan and Bangladesh, they are tied for the most, the nicest people on earth. I've never experienced the kind of hospitality that I received in Bangladesh and Pakistan, anywhere else in the world. And people in the comments always tell me like, oh, it's just because you're white. It's just because you're white. And I truly don't believe that. But I will say that my reception in Bangladesh as a white person visiting in a predominantly non-white country, very different than if a non-white person visited the United States. We, we don't have the most open of arms in the United States. Salman wants to know, hey Brent, what is, what is, what do you like most in Bangladesh? What is unique thing, behave, culture from other countries, bad way or good way? Since we already kind of answered this question, I'm just gonna say the idea of drinking chai, the idea of having like caffeinated tea after like eight o'clock at night is crazy to me. But in places like Bangladesh, y'all are drinking tea until like two, three in the morning. I'm like, what you guys want to go to bed? So that aspect of the culture is really, really unique to me. That doesn't exist in the United States. There is no tea, there is no coffee culture at night. Turkish Entertainment 5309 wants to know, hello Brent. Hi, uh, my name is Zara and I have a question for you. You have traveled to many countries. So is there any country whose language got you interest or you like its accent or maybe your favorite language out of all? If yes, then you are willing to learn it in the future. Please answer my question. I would love to learn another, angle, another language. See, I barely know this language. Um, out of all the countries I've been to, it really comes down to utility. What language could I learn that would be the most useful to me, the most useful to my audience um, in my life? And ever since I was a little kid, I studied Spanish. I'm still not fluent, but I'm always trying to get better. Well, between me and you, I really haven't been practicing for a long time. Um, but Spanish would be the number one language that I want to relearn, that I really want to invest more time in. Um, because I think just from being from the United States, we have so many uh, Hispanic Latino people living in the United States that to be able to communicate um, in Spanish, I think would be invaluable if it would come to like looking for a job or even making these videos. So believe me, when the next Latin American series starts, I promise I'm gonna do better to, to keep improving on my Spanish skills, because I don't want to die only learning one language. That's not special, man. Sam's Malik official. Hi, Brent. How do you know about Bangladesh and what does your country people think about Bangladesh? By the way, best wishes. Um, like I said earlier, I had no idea Bangladesh even existed when I was growing up, especially all through the years I was a teenager. We never talked about Bangladesh in school. Bangladesh never gets mentioned uh, on the US news. And so maybe I looked at a clothing tag when I was younger and saw, oh, the shirt's made in Bangladesh. But me and most Americans, we know nothing. Well, now I know a lot about Bangladesh, but most Americans don't know anything about Bangladesh. They don't know where it is. They couldn't point it out on the map. They couldn't tell you anything about its people. Most people that I tell, oh, I'm going to Bangladesh or I've been to Bangladesh, they're like, what's that? Is that a city in India? I'm not kidding. So many people have never heard uh, of Bangladesh. It's just like non-existent um, in the United States for what? Every reason, but that was the goal of these videos to try to raise um, the appeal and knowledge and awareness of Bangladesh and its culture and people and everything else um, all around the world. So, but you know, these things take time, y'all. Baby steps. As more and more minds and hearts open, people soon start to see that Bangladesh is 
It's great. Uh, Sadiq Hussein. Wait, did he already ask me a question? <laughs> um, hey Brent, do you have any plan to visit Padma Bridge, the biggest bridge in Bangladesh, and the Metro Rail? I did not even know that bridge existed. I love a good bridge. I would definitely go there. Is that bridge in Dhaka? <laughs> On the Metro Rail, I wanted to take it. I wanted to film a video there. As y'all know, living in Dhaka, like it's taking time to get the Metro Rail up to where it needs to be. I guess we could tell that to the government too. Like you need to improve the transportation infrastructure. And now that I think about it, it's probably a good time to tell you my least favorite thing about Bangladesh. But let's wander through this little nice park here while we talk about it. Now, I, th I think someone asked me that question, but I forgot to include it here. Um, but people ask me a lot what I disliked most about the country. And number one, the traffic in Dhaka. That's why I'm talking about the Metro Rail. That's, that's what made me think of this. Insane. The traffic, the worst in the world. Dhaka, the most densely populated city in the world. I feel like I, I lost so many hours of my life sitting in that traffic. But as bad as it is for me, I can't even imagine what it's like for y'all who, who commute there every day and have been doing this for years and years and years. What's going on here? We got some sort of maybe a DJ performance or something. Um, there's always something cool and crazy going on in Tokyo, you dig. But then the second thing that I hated the most was the pollution. And uh, there's not really anything you guys can do about that. As, no as normal citizens of Bangladesh, you can't change the traffic. You can't change the pollution. That's up to the government. That's up to the regulations. But man, the pollution, especially in Chittagong, in this one... Man, it was like a metal factory or something. The sky was like gray. And you could see all these chemicals, these particulates in the air. And I'm thinking, a whole population is just breathing this stuff in? That was that was mortifying. And then, you know, even walking around Dhaka, you know, the air is, air is so, so bad. Um, so those are the two things I liked the least, the traffic and the, and the pollution. And those are two things that can be changed. It just takes time. And so I, I don't think there'll be a single Bangladeshi that will disagree with me in the comments section. Traffic and pollution, easily the worst. And maybe you all have your own issues with the government and things like that. That ain't for me to talk about. But you can share those thoughts down in the comment, all right? Oh man, we got a lot of questions left. Hey Brent, this is Tukir from Bangladesh. I've recently started watching your videos. I've watched all the Bangladesh vi videos you posted. Thank you, man. There were like 50 videos. That's a lot of time, thank you. Um, I have two questions. Before traveling to an unknown place, what do you mostly research about? Depending on the country, I might not do any research at all. I might just show up there, you know, I'll do the basic research. What states do I need to visit? What's the immigration process? Can I even get into this country? But after that, you know, I've always found it's the best and the most exciting to just get inside a new country and figure it out from there. Now granted, I have all the time in the world where if you're on vacation or visiting a new country, maybe you only have a limited amount of time. So from that perspective, I'd say do as much research and planning as possible. I do not think I'm going the right way I need to go. We're going to go the right way though. From my experience, I always feel it's best to just talk to the locals, listen to them, like find out where the good places are. I don't want to, if I'm in a place like Bangladesh, I'm not going to trust Google Maps to tell me where to eat. I'm going to go talk to the actual local people. Tell me where to go, tell me where to explore. There were so many places in Bangladesh, but we're not going that way. Uh, I would have never heard about unless I had talked to a local just because there's not a lot of information about Bangladesh, tourism and travel online. And two, I've seen that you only can speak a little Bangla, but still um, you communicate uh, so well here. How do you do that? Well, um, for me, the biggest part about being a foreigner in a, in a foreign country as being respectful. And so a big part of that is learning the language, learning how to communicate with the people because it's a sign of respect. You know, I feel like I, I'm, I'm in your country, I'm doing my best to try to open up these lines of communication um, between us here. So I would add that to the list of things that I research before I come to a country. Like what are some key phrases I need to know? And then of course, just to try to speak it with confidence, which is much easier said than done. Again, apologies that if your question is here and I'm not answering it, it's because I've already answered it in a previous question. Hey Brent, the name is Maraj, M-H forever. My question is to you, is Chittagong's Mezbon the best food you had in Bangladesh? Or are you sticking with Lucknow restaurant? Lucknow was great. Lucknow was amazing. Lucknow was in the top five restaurants I went to, but Lucknow was Indian food. I can't say an Indian food restaurant is the best in Bangladesh, right? Hey, it's the Mezban. As I, as I told y'all earlier, the Mezban, it was a life-defining meal. A bucket list meal in the truest sense of the word. Ooh, a spicy question. Always relatable. Wait, you're, you already asked a question, always relatable. 
I guess I didn't put a limit on how many questions you can ask. Uh, as an American where spices and food are not common, how do your taste buds easily adapt to the elevated spice levels in countries like Bangladesh? Major respect to all the Bangladeshis who are always so concerned about me eating spicy food. Like, no, no, it's gonna be too hot. I grew up eating hot Cheetos. I love Mexican food. I love spicy food. I love buffalo wings. I love Tabasco. I love Sriracha. The spiciness is in my blood. Being a white guy from Minnesota, you would think that I'd only eat like mashed potatoes and beef and one touch of chili pepper uh, in my life. But no, I've been obsessed with spice as a kid. And now the Bangladeshi people may not like to hear this, but the Bangladeshi food, it wasn't that spicy. The food in Vietnam, Thailand, Mexico, way, way spicier. That's not a diss, that's not to detract, not to detract against the food in Bangladesh. It's just a lot spicier in a lot of other places. But doesn't matter how spicy it is, it was all delicious. Hey Brent, which are your favorite countries so far? Too hard to list. Japan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Mexico, Argentina. Argentina's up there. Oh man, I had a lot, a lot of good memories um, in Argentina. I, I wonder if Argentina's at the top. I said I was gonna rank them, but man. Bang if I were to move somewhere, Argentina, no, I'll take that back. Argentina gets really cold. I'm not moving there. It's still a great country though. The next two questions are kind of similar. Uh, this is Tushar, I wanna know your motivation to be a traveler and how you manage all uh, expenses. And then hi Brent, please explain how to raise travel, finance to travel the world like yourself and how do you get to stay in these top hotels? Um, well, I one of my goals when I started this business was to be able to hire a team and to employ people and be able to improve the lives of people around me. So I have two employees working for me. I have a video editor and then I have a manager. My manager usually reaches out to hotels, asks them if they'd be interested in collaborating with me, and that's how those relationships are made. Otherwise, they'll, they'll send them a DM, um, whatever. But back to the finance part, like it's a constant question mark and a constant struggle. No month is the same. I never know how, how much money I'm gonna make going into the next month. Um, so if you see my videos, you know I'm just, I'm all about budget travel. If you see me in a nice hotel, I promise you, I did not pay for it. It was gifted to me, okay? I I like hostels better anyways. Give me a $25 bunk bed, man. I don't need the Ritz Carlton. I'll take it, I'll show it to the world, but I'm not gonna spend my own pesos on it, you dig? Oh, this is a good one. Always relatable again. You're just all over the place here, but you're asking good questions, so I'm gonna keep answering. How many siblings you got? And how did your family react when you told them you wanna be a travel vlogger? I have one sibling, my brother, my best friend, shout out Blake, love that guy. Um, my family, you know, they, they, they took it not great. You know, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of surprise, like you're giving up this good job to go make videos on YouTube. A lot of family members didn't like it. I won't say they, they weren't supportive. I think they were just kind of like scared, nervous, and confused. Like you're giving up all these opportunities, giving up your whole life here. To, to pursue you know something that has no guarantee of working out. And then of course, just like the sadness and loneliness that comes with a major member of the family leaving. People, are, people always ask me like, oh, how did your friends take it? I, I told my friends for a while, I don't think any of them ever believed I was gonna do it. But here we are. And, uh, but all my friends were, were, were supportive. But most people just like shocked, like, you doing that? Okay. What do you imagine whenever you hear the name of Bangladesh? Uh, what was the core thing that turned your mind to get here in Bangladesh from uh, Mr. Osama? You know, I don't know what the core thing was. It just seemed like kind of the next natural step after being in Pakistan um, for so long, just because the country shares so much history. And then after Bangladesh, I, I went to India. I felt it was like my duty to, to kind of like delve into these three countries and, and see how they're different and uh, compare to each other. But spoiler alert, I haven't posted the India vlogs yet. I loved India. India, India was, I can't wait to show you the blogs. The blogs are crazy from India, man. Uh, but I guess when someone says the word Bangladesh, I just think of like the flag? Uh-uh, too, too hard, tough question. Uh, Mashur Alam, hello Brent, what is the actual difference you found between South Asian country and Western countries? Do you think these South Asian countries has a language barrier, which helps you to explore something? Very new that you never thought of. I'm a little bit confused by the question, but I mean, the differences really come down to religion, culture, food, but just like the people in the West aren't as friendly as the people in, in Asia and Southeast Asia, especially. Americans, man, some of us are just kind of cold and, and angry and 
I don't know what that is. We could get into that in a whole, whole nother video. But in a nutshell, the niceness, the kindness of the Southeast Asians, 1,000 times more so than those of the countries in the West. Hey Brent, my name is Hagu Pacha. I am from Uttara, Dhaka. We spent one day cruising around Uttara, or Uttara, sorry. And my question is, what made you stay in Bangladesh so long? Because I remember you were originally planning to stay here for a few days. And what's different about Bangladesh and your eyes compared to other countries in South Asia? Yeah, I think originally, well, I'd only planned to stay for 30 days, because that's how long the visa was. But with all, within almost the first days of being there, I was like, there's too much to see. There's too much to explore. 30 days isn't going to be enough. And then I just kept meeting, you know, remarkable, amazing people, made a lot of new friends. And uh, each of them just gave me more and more reasons to stay for just a little, a little bit longer. But finally we got to like the end and I had like overstayed my visa like crazy. And I think they were going to hit me with some super high fines and it just became kind of like stressful at the end. So I'm like, yeah, I could stay longer, but this, the, the visa extension process was just tough and expensive. Tasif wants to know, I saw your LinkedIn profile that you worked in sales. My question is, what motivates you to change your career path and become a full-time travel vlogger? By the way, I saw your travel vlog on your website, and do you have any tips for those who want to start a career like you? I know passion is the main key, but apart from that, what kind of skills do we require? Okay, I would not be the person I am today. I would not be the YouTuber vlogger I am today. And just all around, I guess you could call me a business person because I, I run a business. I would not be the person who I am without number one, my university education, and number two, having a job in sales that gave me the tools, the know-how um, to succeed in that realm um, of life. So my advice to anyone who wants to get into this YouTube journey, focus on yourself. Make sure that you have a backup plan. Because for me, if YouTube doesn't work out, and I'm saying doesn't because like, anything can happen. Um, I do have a valuable skill set that I can take into the workplace and get a job, um, hopefully virtually anywhere in the world. Hopefully it's not gonna come to that. I don't even have a plan B. We're not thinking about a plan B. Um, but for you guys thinking out there, do not put all your eggs in one basket. I am a huge proponent of taking risks and everything, but I've met some YouTubers who have failed and it's not a good feeling and they have nothing to fall back onto. So chase your dreams, get out there and do it and all those other cliches but consider the risks <laughs> as well, right? If I did not have a decent amount of money saved up, I would not have done this. I would not have, I wouldn't have the, I wouldn't have the guts to quit my job with just like $5,000, $10,000 in the bank. Uh-uh-uh, not possible and, and not realistic. So get your education, even though I know there's a big argument about, oh, she'd go to college and I'd go to, get as much education as you can, okay? And if you can't go to a university, learn as much as you can online books whatever you can do to improve yourself mentally but then one of the other key components is talking to as many people as possible boost those social skills okay a lot of you guys are introverts out there it's going to be hard to be an introvert and then to get on camera so yeah passion of course but hard work dedication training and and, and understanding what life is going to be like if this thing were to fail. I got a lot of young guys watching me who are like, I want to be a video game streamer. I'm like, that's awesome, man. But becoming a video game streamer, it's like making it in the NBA or like Milan football. I don't know. I don't know a lot about football and soccer. Milan, AC, something like that. Um, it's hard. I will say it's probably, it's probably easier to succeed as a travel vlogger than it would be to succeed as a video gamer just because not only do you need the personality to draw on the viewers, you also need insane video game skills. I like to think I have the personality, the video game skills, not so much. Genius Kid Zone wants to know, hey Brent, can I ask you which country has the best food? Impossible. Im 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 Impossible. Oh my God, I think I just photobombed them. I'm sorry. Um, the best food, I think it, it might be here. It might be in Japan. Uh, it's too hard. There, I've, I've had amazing dishes in every country I've been to, but I will tell you the worst food I've ever had, the country with the worst food. You can't get upset at me. It's just a statement of fact. From my experience, I, had a, I was there for two or three weeks. The worst food that I, the country that has the worst food anywhere in the world is Cuba, but it's not their fault. I'm sure a lot of you from Bangladesh probably don't even care about Cuba, would never think of visiting there, but Cuba does not have good food because its resources are very limited with um, 
embargoes and, and tariffs and, and things like that. We won't get into the political nonsense at all, but Cuba had the most disappointing food by far. Every other country, you can find good food anywhere, just not Cuba. Hey Brent, as a content creator myself, travel with peace. I love your work, specifically noticeable in your videos is how you're always very amped up, very energized and overly excited, which makes you so much more unique, of course. But I wonder if you could tell the viewers how travel vlogging isn't always shiny roses and as easy and exciting as it looks on camera. Well, we kind of talked earlier about how I go through periods of sadness and depression, just like a lot of people. Um, but as far as the energy level is concerned, like it's always up. Energy level is always at 100% ever since I was a kid. Like never like ADD crazy energy, but just like whatever it takes. Let's do it, let's get it done. And uh, you know, not to give myself a large sense of importance, but I'm here on this earth to, to motivate people, to help people, to make people smile. And like I said, in just some small way, make a difference. Nobody likes a negative Nelly. Nobody likes a downer Danny. You just gotta be positive. If you're positive, you're positive the people around you, everybody's gonna win. If you're around people that are negative, everyone's gonna get brought down with it, guys. And in the moments that I do get sad and I, and I do get depressed, um, I have to remind myself, you know, how lucky I am to be in this position, how my problems are so small and insignificant compared to the problems of so many other people around the world. So I try to never lose sight of the fact that I am very lucky, um, that I am thankful um, for all this. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it's hard to pull yourself out of that rut if you're feeling down. When I came back from the hospital after Pakistan, I was so, so depressed. I just, I, I gained so much weight. I just ate a bunch of food. Oh, Japanese fire department, that's cool. Um, I, I just, I wasn't myself. I was angry that I, that I got sick. I was angry that I had to spend $15,000 on that hospital bill, money I didn't get back. I was angry. I was supposed to come to Bangladesh last year after Pakistan. I was going to Pakistan, Dubai, and then Bangladesh. I had to cancel my original Bangladesh trip because I got typhoid. But it would be so phony and a, and a total lie for me to sit here and say like, life's perfect, I never have bad days there there I mean I'm sure you've noticed there's weeks when I don't post any Instagram stories at all now those situations it's not always because I'm like sad or depressed or anything um, but a lot of the time just if I'm sad I don't feel like creating because I I can't find that happiness inside to really 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 you know excite you guys and show you show you the real me sad Brent is not not the real me. You feel me? Travel shoots. Hello, Brent Tim. My name is Asudar Raman from Thakurgoan district. Haven't heard of that. Pergonj Upazila in Bangladesh. No, nah, I never heard of that. Um, actually, I want to say you about historical place you need to visit. The biggest mango tree in Bangladesh, even in South Asia, which is located in Balia Dangi in Thakuragan. If you create a video tree there, then many people can know through your video. Even your own country. Okay, the largest Bangladesh tree in Asia? No, no, the, <laughs> the largest mango tree in Asia? Are you kidding me? I would definitely come and see that. Wow, 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 but right now, beautiful fall. Well, I guess fall was like a month ago. Beautiful winter day out here in Japan. We still got a lot of questions to go. What the heck? Mazir Rali. Hey, Brent, I am Maxir Rali, one of Bangladesh's earliest funk artists. Funk? Punk? My question is, how is your eight Bangladesh from a scale of one to 10? Only doc experience. What the heck is funk? Is that a, is that a typo? I'm very curious now what, what this guy's doing. I'm gonna give uh, the people of Dhaka a 10, the food of Dhaka a 10, um, but the traffic and pollution of Dhaka, zero? <laughs> is, that, is that possible? So weigh those out, but the pros far outweigh the cons uh, in Dhaka. We get to talk about a Bangladeshi scam now. Hi, what happened with the Italian restaurant that wasn't paying you when you did a video for them? Hito21 wants to know, everything settled, what is the current status? So I posted about this on my YouTube channel while I was in Bangladesh, then I took it down because, I don't know, could have been issues. But long story short, a lot of restaurants uh, will pay me to come in and to take professional pictures of their food and to make a video about the food. And this one Italian restaurant paid me to come on in, or at least they said they were gonna pay me. Pay me. This restaurant was owned from a guy from America. I don't even think he was, he definitely wasn't Bangladeshi. He was like born in America, 
studying in Italy or something, and he's like, okay, we're gonna pay you this much, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. And the guy completely lied to me. We went there to shoot the video, he brought out all the food, I'm making the video, I'm eating, and then he's like, uh, I think we might have to cancel this because like, I can't pay you today. I'm like, dude, I've, I've already like, I spent three hours here making this video. We were supposed to go like two other restaurants he owned. It turned into like a 10 day in exercise in insanity, trying to get money from this guy. I'm like, you owe me this money. You said you would give me this money. He never paid me. He kept dodging me. He kept coming up with so many excuses, so many lies. The guy is an absolute scumbag. I had to look up the name of the restaurant and the name of the scammer, the name of the thief for lack of a better word. Uh, the restaurant's name is Raffinato, Italian restaurant in Dhaka. Never go there. I hope it's shut down by now. And uh, the scammer's name was Alex Aziz. He had some like different name that he like had on his shirt, but Alex Aziz uh, is his real name. An American man, born in America, now in Bangladesh, scamming people uh, out of their money and out of their work. No respect for that guy. I, nothing more I could do. I posted about it on YouTube and everywhere else. I don't know. That's that's all I can do, but Turjoy Rosario, don't you have any girlfriend? No, I don't. I'm sure someone's gonna ask if I'm married too. I am not married. I'm a single guy looking for love in all the wrong places. Japan is right now. Uh, but yeah, no girlfriend. I had a girlfriend like almost two years ago. Um, broke up, obviously. Never been married. Yeah don't have a girlfriend, not rolling it out. Wahid Dim has a bunch of questions. Did you really get bored by the conservativeness of people in Bangladesh in many cases? No, it'd be so disrespectful to get bored. I understand that it's a Muslim majority country and alcohol is, is forbidden, the things like that. And just because people don't drink, I would never associate a country's culture or a country's religion with boredom, with conservativeness, with, with boredom. I had just as much fun in Bangladesh as I had anywhere else in the world, alcohol or not. So there was no boredom at all in, in Bangladesh. Did you really experience the counterparts, the educational system in Bangladesh? If you do, how is it there? Oh my God. Oh dude, it's, it's the Mario Karters. Yeah! <laughs> only in Japan, right? Hashtag only in Japan. Um, I don't know what that question means. And no, I guess I didn't experience the counterparts of the education system because I, I didn't go to school there. Did you find any crush girl in Bangladesh? Oh yeah, 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 a few crushes out there. All this walking and talking, we gotta take a little rest right here, right? Let's slow it down for just a second, y'all. Okay, next question comes from uh, Otaku Obani, 1078. Hashtag you came from a first world country and so far Bangladesh is a third world country. So can you tell us what's missing in Bangladesh and what needs to be more developed here to upgrade its current situation. Uh, well, far be it for me to tell a country how they should run their country, to tell a government what they should do. Um, but straight up, the differences between a third world and first world country, they're not that big. The biggest component comes down to money and the fair and equal distribution of that money. So if Bangladesh is receiving a bunch of money from aid, loans, the World Bank, uh, whatever, that money should go into infrastructure, it should go into the people, it should go into improving the lives of everybody in Bangladesh. But just like in America, that is not always the case, because at least in America, now I can't speak for what happens in Bangladesh because I don't know, the politicians, governments, presidents, they want all their money, they want all that money to themselves and they're gonna do everything they can to make sure you get as little money as possible. So um, Bangladesh, it just needs an influx of more money coming from within, not aid, not loans. It needs to generate money from inside, which is, what's it, which is what it's doing with the insane garment manufacturing industry, like the one or two largest in the world after China, I think. Um, but it's just a question of like, is that money being fairly um, distributed and, and do the leaders of your country have your best interests and the interests of all the people in Bangladesh at heart? And no matter what country you look at, the answer is they usually don't. Uh, G. Sean, I remember you from Facebook asking tips for a Bangladesh tour. I had no idea that you were a vlogger then, LOL. So what's the best thing about Chittagong? Uh, yeah, I actually posted on the Bangladesh Facebook group like two years ago saying I was coming. Inbox blew up. I can't be, believe people remember me all the way back from that. Um, but the best thing about Chittagong was the uh, 
uh, Mesmon and the markets. There were some really, really cool markets. I felt like I made my most exciting videos in Chittagong. That's just how I feel. How do you rate Bangladeshi people? GG Volcano wants to know. I never met one bad person. Everyone was great, everyone was kind, everyone was sweet. Adib Khan, what are the main differences that you noticed between Pakistan and Bangladesh in terms of culture, food, and people? Well, the food, while similar, was quite different. I did feel like Pakistan maybe used a little bit more oil in their foods. The Pakistani foods seemed to be a bit more oily, and it seemed Bangladesh had a few more vegetable options. Um, but all the food was like one-to-one. -one. It was all good, it was, it was all delicious. I can't say that I liked one country's food over the other. I just love Desi food. Indian food, Bangladeshi food, Pakistani food. I love it all. You can't go wrong with any of those, any of those food options. Uh, Ross Videos. My name is Rossell and I'm a Bangladeshi American. I live in Michigan. Shout out Michigan. Where we have a little Bangladesh called Banglatown. You should definitely come here for a vlog. I'll be your host. Dude, had no idea. I would definitely love to come to Banglatown, Michigan. There's also some giant like only Muslim, like it's a town in Michigan and it's only filled with Muslims. I want to go there too. I'm, I'm planning to go there. Yeah, dude, shoot me a DM. I would love to come to Bangladesh. That, I would love to come to Bangladesh, Bangladesh in, in Detroit. It's just a short driveway from my house. Rala121 wants to know, how many times did you get traveler's diarrhea on your adventures in Bangladesh? If I had diarrhea the entire time, does that only count as having it once? I'm just kidding. I only got Dire, traveler's diarrhea two times in Bangladesh. One was very, very mild. Who knows where it came from? But then the other bout of traveler's diarrhea I got from old Dhaka, drinking that like um, beauty lachi or the beauty lemonade. I was wrecked, wrecked the next day. But neither incident lasted long. And now that I've answered the question about diarrhea, it seems like a perfect time to use the bathroom here. And that's that. That does it for all the questions. It didn't really feel like 400 questions, but there were a lot of duplicate questions uh, in there. Major thanks to everybody that reached out with questions. I often do this on my Instagram stories where I'm like, ask me anything, uh, and I answer, but I wanted this video to just be about um, Bangladesh and a little bit um, about my life. Thank you again uh, from the bottom of my heart to everybody that made my time in the country so special. All the friends I made, all the business partners I made, and all just the random people that came up to me on the street, whether they knew me or just wanted to take a selfie with me. I felt so incredibly loved um, in Bangladesh and, and, and that feeling. It's like hard to recreate, hard to capture um, anywhere else um, in the world. So like I said at the start of the video, Bangladesh, Bangladeshi people, um, you changed my life. I think I grew like 58,000 subscribers, at least 50,000 subscribers on YouTube just from Bangladesh. Um, forever indebted, for, for, forever, ever, forever grateful that you enjoyed the videos and that you keep supporting me. But I do ask one thing, just one, one thing. I've noticed that when I leave a country, people aren't so much interested in the next country I go to because it's not their country. Well, hopefully, you like me enough to want to continue to follow where I go all around the world, even if it's not Bangladesh, um, for a few more months. So, one more time, thank you again. I truly love you all from the bottom of my heart. I'm so excited that you've given me the opportunity to go to places like this. Thank you. My name is Brent Tim from Tokyo, Japan. I need a water. It's getting dry. I'm saying ciao for now.